you, Lord. Let me show you something. Just keep your hands on him. Just keep your hands on his throat. John G. Lake used to teach his healing, call them healing technicians. And he said, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus flows through your hands. And he would have people come like this, and they wouldn't say a word. They'd lay hands on him. Pray in the spirit, and they believed that the healing power of God was flowing through their hands into that person's body. And they would have people come. Sometimes it was a week, but every week they would come, and every one of them was healed. Some of them it took months. Some of them it took instant. Spokane, Washington was called the healthiest city in the United States. Over 100,000 documented healings in five years. That's, I figured it out. That's like 200 and some people a day getting healed. And so I just believe as, as, as we keep doing this, that healing power is flowing into Hector. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Just let that soak. It was so good to come in here tonight and you were praying for Peter. He has relief. Begin to have relief. I've learned, I'm still learning, but the difference between releasing that healing into somebody as opposed to commanding without enough faith behind that command to make it happen. I've, I've been in this too many years. I've seen if, if everything that everybody commanded, everybody in the world would be healed. All of you have been here a long time, and we believe in healing, and we've seen people healed, and, and, and we've seen the manifestation of God come. Even tonight, I, I, I operate a lot in the gifts and in the, in the words of knowledge. How many of you expect? See, see I'm not going to just do this for September. We're, we're going to do it till everybody's healed. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, why quit? Yeah. If we just do it in September, we'll go back to October, same old, same old. This is not a teaching. This is a school of healing. Amen. And the Lord spoke to me, said, he said, to, to teach and release. And we've been releasing healing tonight, and already benefits are coming to people. And I wouldn't be surprised, Hector, if you wake up in the middle of the night speaking in a normal voice. Amen. Amen. I've seen people years when Scott City, I forget the exact example, but one person we prayed for him, didn't seem like anything happened. They woke up about 3 o'clock in the morning totally healed. Hallelujah. Amen. But I, want us, I really believe the Holy Spirit wants us to come to a place where when we lay hands on people, they're healed instantly because that's what Jesus did. And, and I know that we're moving in that direction. And we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop till your toes are totally... In fact, your toes are probably going to get healed here pretty soon. Amen? I had a big old, what is that called, a ganglion cyst? About, I don't know, about that big right here on that wrist. Those things hurt if anybody's had some. And we started learning, this was back in, in, when I was in Colorado the years ago, we began to learn that if you touch something and speak to it, it'll go away. And it sounded new, but it sounded good to me. And I touched that thing with my finger, and I just commanded it to leave, and it's going to go away. I never paid any attention to it after that. As you can see, it's completely gone. Just completely gone. I had psoriasis so bad, they used to get this black tar stuff and put on it. 
It's horrible. And I, I just spoke to it and, and just one time. And then I said, Lord, I, I just thank you. I was completely left. Sometimes we're speaking to something, but not in faith. We're hoping it'll get better. We want it to get better. But I just know this. When you believe it, it's a done deal. It just brings healing. Turn with me to, I'm going to give you some foundational scriptures. And here's your assignment. I want you to go through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I want you to read every scripture where Jesus healed everybody. Just the ones where he healed them all. Then we'll go to individual healings. But go and, and, and I'm going to read some, some scriptures just in Matthew tonight. But every scripture where it says Jesus healed them all, I want you to read them, read them, read them. Until all of a sudden, in your brain, <laughs> in your heart, because it says if we don't doubt what we say, if we don't doubt in our heart, we will have what we say. That's how faith works. But meditate on this. Write them down if you need. I've written down every scripture where Jesus healed somebody. And then I wrote out the healing scriptures in the book of Acts, which we'll go through also. Just write them down. Speak them. Google them. If you say, well, I don't know how to find them, go to Google and say, all the healing scriptures where Jesus healed them all. That's all you have to do. And it'll come up and, and it'll, it'll list every scripture in the New Testament where Jesus healed all of them. Because we have to get something in our mind. And this is right here, a foundational scripture in Hebrews 13, 8. This is so awesome. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So we have to, every day, we have to, I want you to say these things because it's, see, what you say is what you see. And what you see is what you'll do. And I'm talking about your spiritual eyes. When you begin to say the word of God, you'll begin to see it. Because what you say or what you'll do is what you'll see. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It's a principle. It's a spiritual law. It happens. That doesn't just not for the church. That's a law. People in the world, they're, they're, they're uh, an action of what they've been saying and believing in their heart. If, like Jesus said, if they have an evil heart, evil things come out. If they have a pure heart, pure things come out. Because Jesus said, if you're going to locate somebody, listen to their words. Because he's given that principle. It's a, it's a law. It's a spiritual law. If, if I want to know how mature somebody is, I just listen to how you talk because your words betray you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's why we get this word in our heart that the word of God says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then in, in Acts 10, 38 will be another foundational scripture. I never get tired. I've, I've been reading these over all. <laughs> I've been reading these for 40 years. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what we see him doing then, he still does now. Right. Only difference is he does it through the church. Through us, his body. Jesus Christ, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Now, I want to I say something here. Do you notice it didn't say 
Jesus, the Son of God. He identified him as a man, Jesus of Nazareth. So what does that mean? And back then in those days, Jesus was a citizen of Nazareth. That's where he was from. And if you follow a lot of scriptures and even, even uh, uh, cultures today, find out what city were you from? Because it talks of your culture. So it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the son of man. So that means that you and I are anointed. Amen. How he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. I believe that the church has done great jobs as far as like Samaritan Purse and, and we go over to countries and we help them. I think, that's, I think that's God. I think it's good. But that word there, that's not what they were talking about, Jesus. He went about doing good. What was he doing? Healing all who were oppressed to the devil. He wasn't doing good things. He was doing good and the proof that he was doing good, he's healed everybody that was oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. <laughs> I want us to go about doing good. Now, we do good things. We, we give people food. We should be doing these kind of things. But what Jesus of Nazareth did, and by the way, when he wanted to, he, when he wanted to feed 5,000 people, it's just a few fishes and loaves. Prayed it, blessed it, fed all those people. 5,000 men plus women and children. Somebody says it could be up, that could have been up to 15,000 people or more. Can you imagine that? When we was over in Israel, we were up there where that happened. I'm just trying to picture on this mountainside that we were on, all 15,000 people sitting out there. And it says they were with, Jesus said, they've been with me three days now. Because why? Because he was healing everybody. And he's teaching the kingdom. He said, and they haven't eaten anything for three days. <laughs> so feed them something. And they said, well, Lord, do we go to town and buy a bunch of food? No, what do you have? And, well, we got a few fishes here and those. He said, that's enough. Have them sit down in companies of 50. And, and you try, I was trying to picture this. And see him taking time to go out, tell everybody, we're going to break you up in groups of 50. And then Jesus blessed what he had and gave, and think about this. I don't know how that happened, but it, probably each one of them may have had a basket. I don't know, with a few crumbs in it. But all I know is all of a sudden it began to multiply. And they just fed everybody. I've often thought sometime, what about when we give food to other countries, which is a good thing. But what if somebody went over with the faith of Jesus and fed them all supernaturally? I'm just saying we need to think bigger. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with what we're doing I just think not. We're, 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 we're below where the Lord wants us to be in relationship to telling the world about Jesus and releasing the power of his name. But we've got to remember something. God said how he anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Why is that important to us? Because he's anointed Jesus as a son of man and as a son of man, he showed us as human beings how we're supposed to be as men and women of God. Amen. I will say this. Jesus said the amount of thought that someone gives to something, I'm paraphrasing this, that's the amount that will come back to them. So, 
if I am meditating more on the world, more of the world is going to come back to me. But if I'm in these scriptures and I'm reading these scriptures every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, going through there how Jesus healed everybody. Like I said, I've written them down. I've meditated on them. I've spoken them. I've read them. Because the amount of thought that you give towards the word of God is the amount of the revelation of God that will come back into your life. So we can't quit. We can't go a month. We won't, we won't get there in a month. And I'm not speaking doubt and unbelief. I'm just telling you, it's going to take us a little bit of time to get there. And little by little, we can, we, we see people, you're going to see people healed. Tonight, we've, I believe we've seen people healed. And that was, like I said, it's so exciting. I come in here and you're praying over Peter. And he had some relief. Am I right? Had peace because of the prayers of the saints. But think about Oscar with an amputated leg below the knee. What if he walked in here and just bam, all of a sudden that, knee, that leg came out? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Some of you may remember this. This was back in um, probably the 70s, early 80s. During a charismatic renewal and uh, full gospel businessmen. And God was doing miracles all over the world. In South America, there was a, a gentleman. He was black. And his right, I think it was his right hand. was Somehow he lost his right hand. So he didn't have a right hand. And I heard his testimony, and I saw his hand. God gave him a brand new hand, but it was white. <laughs> and, and he said, Lord, why did you give me a white hand? Because he said, if I'd have made it black, they wouldn't believe you. Isn't that something? There was another guy back then who had a glass eye and all of a sudden he began to see out of that eye and he would take the eye out cover this eye he could see perfect why didn't God put an eye back in there I don't know maybe it's to show people that he really was blind you know maybe they had to see that there's no limit to what God can do. None. One of the greatest healings I saw back when we were in Kansas, this one person came up and their, their wrist was stiff like this. And I prayed for it. Nothing happened. And about, I was praying for it. All of a sudden, they just started shouting and hollering. And I went, I said, what is going on? And that lady was doing this. Now, here's the deal. She said, they said, you don't understand. She turned her wrist over, and she had, a, she had a scar, like a horseshoe scar here. They said, they cut all that out in the bone, and they put a steel rod there. She couldn't bend her wrist. And there she was, bending her wrist. What happened to the steel rod? I don't know. But I seen it with my own eyes. I saw that lady moving her wrist, and they were just going wild. I think sometimes if they told you what you was praying for, you'd have, to, you'd have to really find out where your faith is at. Smith Wigglesworth even one time was praying for someone. He looked at him. He said, Lord, this is beyond my faith. He said, you've got to give me the gift of faith for this person. And God did, and the person was healed instantly. Because, see, the gift of faith, when the gift of faith works, you can't, I've walked in that about three or four times, and when that gift of faith hits you, every time I've had the gift of faith hit me, everybody was healed that I prayed for. Some of them, I never, never even touched them. Because when the gift of faith comes, it's not your faith. It's the gift given to you by the Spirit. It's one of the spiritual gifts. And when that gift of faith comes, you will see instant miracles. 
And you'll never doubt. You know, you know that you know by the Spirit that when you come near a person with the gift of faith, they're going to be healed instantly. And I've seen it happen in my life about four times. I can't make that happen. But when that gift of faith comes, everybody begins to get healed. And that row right back there, <laughs> this was on a, I don't know if it's at night that Andrew was supposed to be here and he didn't come. But anyway, there was, a, there was an old lady. I mean, she's probably 80 or more. And she had a walker. Careful. <laughs> and, uh, No, she had, she had a cane. She couldn't hardly walk without a cane. And the Lord said, go take the cane away from her. So I went and I took her cane. He said, now back up. I backed up 10 or 15, 20 feet. I said, here, come get your cane. Yep. You remember? And she just took off walking. And she said, I don't need this cane anymore. I've had that cane in my office. I don't know what happened to it. But what, what I'm saying is, when that happens, I had no doubt. None. When we were in Scotland in 2019, there was a, a, a gentleman that was probably in his 70s, had cancer. I think I've told you this before, and his, his right hand is all cancerous, bandaged up. He couldn't walk hardly at all. He was all crippled up. And anyway, we brought him up and we walked him until he was walking perfect. I just kept walking with him and had him walk up and downstairs and walk up and around. I got a video on my phone he sent to me, a picture of his hand totally healed. And then he videoed himself walking just to show me that he was still doing well. That's the power of God. And we're going to do some of that where sometimes you just take a person and walk with them or touch them and stand with them and healing comes. Amen. When I was at Andrews that time, I have the record <laughs> for the longest healing school. They go from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. They do about a half hour of worship, a little bit of teaching, and they have people come up and they're prayed for I went till 5.30. Andrew was there, and he said, the power of God's in this place. And it's just people were being healed, and just, I never touched anybody. I said, Lord, I, I'd like to have that every time. And I'm going to have it every time. Amen. And you're going to have it every time. Amen. I really believe that. That we become a living epistle of someone who can go about in the name of Jesus and heal everybody. A lot of things have to happen. We have to die more to self so that Christ can live in every area. We have to be full of love and compassion. So that we, we're not trying to prove Jesus is the healer. We're not trying to, we're just, we're, we have compassion to heal the sick. When you see someone, we have, we're filled with compassion. And a lot of you in here have done that. You have prayed for people and they've been healed, right? Out in the marketplace or different places. So I'm talking to a group of people who have experienced healing for others and maybe healing in your own body. But God wants everybody healed. Amen. And the thing, thing we think about is that we just think, well, this is just the way I am. But if it's not perfect health, that's not God's will for us. Amen. And we have to get, get the Holy Spirit, give us that, that spiritual mind of Christ. And the only way we're going to do that is yield to this word and yield ourselves to believe it and keep practicing it. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. I don't know if you think about this with me. 
what effect would it have in this area, not here but in the world, if, if somebody knew that if you get to the shepherd's house, you're going to be healed instantly? This place wouldn't hold all those people. But it would, it would change our life radically. Because that would turn into an everyday deal. And not just an outpouring of the Spirit that lasts for four or five years, but a manifestation of the kingdom of God because that's the way the early church operated. And we'll read that in the book of Acts. In fact, another foundational scripture is Acts 5.16. I'm going to read this to you. I don't know about you, but I am really expecting. Acts 5.16, it says, The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. That was happening. That was, a, that was the normal outpouring of the Spirit of glory, the Holy Spirit. And you know why they brought them to Jerusalem? Because the kingdom of God was only in Jerusalem. The church hadn't been dispersed going out there preaching the kingdom yet. So all those people had to come where the kingdom was at. And if we're going to believe God that the kingdom of God be here in fullness of what God's called the kingdom to do on earth in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit, then we're going to, we're going to have to see the same thing. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he did that in the book of Acts, I was listening to a pastor one time um, who said, you know, the book of Acts is you can't build any doctrine off the book of Acts. And, and that was a primitive church. And they needed to see signs and wonders. I wanted to reach through the, the radio and grab him by the throat and say, listen, you're spreading a lie. You're hurting the body of Christ. You're hurting the heart of God the Father who put his son to the most torturous human possible death to bring healing to us. And now you're saying God doesn't do it to more. God has mercy on people. <laughs> he really does. Because you see, when we exalt anything above Jesus, it hurts the heart of God the Father. Because of what he did to his son for us. I, I want to, you know, I'm 77. And I've got it probably 20 more years. Change the oil every once in a while, I'm good. Just make sure I'm maintained, right? I don't know how long, but I'm going to be here as long as God wants me here. And I'm going to do it in health and strength. But for me, to stand before the Lord, And have allowed my own self or somebody else's doctrine to keep me from fully expressing Jesus Christ to the world. I, I, I can't deal with that. I have to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I believe if I stay in faith and, and love and God's people, I believe I'll hear the master say that. But for me, that what the Lord showed me in 1978, everybody being healed... I have to see that before I go home and be with Jesus. And I believe we have the opportunity as a body to see that happen here. And I'm not going to get in a hurry because I want to say something to all of us. We talk about exalting Jesus in everything we do, and we do as much as we know how, and hosting his glory. Now, to host his glory... There has to be a people that's walking in holiness, yeah. not by the law, but by knowing God. So there's a lot of preparation that takes place for, for a body of believers to host that kind of glory. 
Because people can die in that kind of glory. Ask Ananias and Sapphira. But the grace of God is for us to receive that glory. There's scripture. If you want to do a good study, look how many times in the New Covenant where they talked about that we've been made for his glory. We've been made to partake of his glory. We've been changed from, we've been called, justified, and we've been glorified. Read Ephesians chapter 1 and 2 where God has called us to be like him and to walk in his glory. We've been made for glory. That's who we are as the body of Christ. But it takes the experiencing of his presence to make that happen. The early church in Acts chapter 4, when they were threatened not to preach and teach in his name. <laughs> and I'll go into a lot of detail this later, but I'm just throwing some things at you right now. It says that great grace was upon them all. And that word grace there, it is grace, charis, but it's, it also is synonymous with Shekinah glory in that situation. And what it meant was the Shekinah glory was resting upon the church. God's very glory was resting on the church. And that's why you get to Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira die. The fear of the Lord is upon not only the church, but the whole city. And then everybody's being healed. That's what it takes for this to happen. It's beyond just laying hands on the sick. Now, we'll never stop doing that. But there was an atmosphere of the Shekinah glory that was resting on the church whereby everybody's being healed. That's what I'm talking about. And I believe that's where the Lord wants to take us and to teach us how to do this, that we release more and more, uh, not only the, because as we look at Jesus, one thing you're going to see is sometimes he laid hands on somebody, everybody. Other times he, he, just the power and presence of God was there to heal everybody. Other times he spoke the healing. There's You'll see how many different ways he healed people, full of compassion. And like I said Sunday, when at the pool of Shalom there where they, you know, where the angel would stir the water, and that one guy says, well, you know, everybody beats me to the water. And Jesus healed him. Now think about this. I don't know how many was there. I would say probably hundreds. And the father, here's the key. The Father sent Jesus to one man, and that's what we have to know by the Spirit. What is the Father? There's sometimes the, the, the Father may say, don't pray for that person. He knows. And so the other thing we have to do is become so sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and sometimes he has to erase some things that we think we've been doing right, and refocus on us on how to do it right. Am I making sense? And that's what we're going to experience. That's what we're going to experience. And the Lord, he said, just teach and release. Because you have to see miracles to really fulfill what God wants to do. And I, we have to come to a place to believe anybody we pray for will be healed instantly. Now, I know a lot of my brothers that, that would disagree with me, and I'm talking about some men I know in high places. But I, I'm going to try and believe what the Holy Spirit says. And there's no condemnation. There's, you know, there's no condemn. I would never tell anybody not to go to a doctor. I've seen people die. We've had people in this church over the years die, had cancer, and they wouldn't go to a doctor. And I knew their faith was not at that level yet. And they died. 
I can name at least three of them right now. Tried to tell them there's no shame in going to a doctor. If, you know, there's no shame in that. You have to know how powerful is your belief system. And if you tell somebody to just quit taking medicine or doing something, you'll probably kill a whole lot of people. But let the Holy Spirit tell them that and let the Word of God so fill their hearts, they can do that. They can do that. So the biggest proof to a doctor would be when that person comes in, you had this, but I don't know what happened to it. It's not there anymore. Dorothy, years ago, she had a, a she does her, you know, yearly mammogram, and they found something. I don't know, it's about that big, I think. And Dr. Oyhus was her doctor, and so she, he called her, or talked to her and said, Dorothy, uh, th this is something. He basically told her, this is not a cyst. Listen, he, was, he didn't say the word, but he was basically saying, this is probably cancerous. He didn't use that word, but he said, Dorothy, this is something. We have to check it out. Well, we began to pray about it and just say no to it. And when she went back and did the second x-ray or whatever they did, it was completely gone. And that's when, you, when the doctor can't argue with that. When they said, Micaiah will be a vegetable the rest of her life. Well, we didn't accept that. And he will complete the good work he started in her. <laughs> you watch. <laughs> because all of you, thank you so much. You agree with me and we all love her and pray for her. In Matthew, we're going to start going through Matthew first. And so I'd encourage you, go to Matthew and just look every scripture in Matthew where Jesus healed them all. I do want to read this tonight, though, as we end here, is that, does this sound good to everybody? I want to expect Hector to be speaking normal. I want to expect Diana, all that completely left. And Amen. everybody in this room, we begin to expect it. Pat's eyes healed. Every, totally healed. I was telling Mike today, you know, he's got a bow leg because he messed it up. And they, the doctors messed it up. I'm, I want to see that leg straight. And I believe we'll see it. This is where we're headed. And I'm not going to stop. I don't want us to stop. I want us to, we'll be known as a place where people can be healed. And that's going to change us a whole lot. And so that's what I'm, I'm believing for. But here's another principle in Acts, or in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. It says, that evening they brought to him many who were possessed with demons, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. And this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. And that's back in Isaiah 53. That he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. Our chastisement upon him and of peace, and with his stripes we were healed. And the scripture before that says, he took upon himself our sicknesses and diseases. And that's what, that's what uh, Peter was quoting. Don't let any other doctrine in your mind that says, well, that happened back then. But it doesn't happen today. Well, then Jesus isn't the same yesterday and today and forever. That, that, uh, uh, it's probably a demon doctrine that's got the church to believe a lie. Isaiah 53 wasn't just there. That was Jesus proving 
by healing everybody and casting out all the demons, that that scripture was fulfilled in him, but now is passed into us, the church. Somewhere that, that dispensational teaching has somewhere missed that and said, well, that was just back then. It didn't transfer to today. That's a lie. And the church has bought that lie to the point that some parts of the church believe if you're sick, you're suffering for God. Well, if that's true, the whole world's suffering for Jesus. Amen. The thing I learned about sickness is I don't want to be sick no more. Isn't that right? And Jesus made it possible that we don't have to be sick. Amen. If you have to take enough medicine to keep you alive for a while, I like what Fred Price, and I'll end with this. Fred Price taught one of the greatest teaching on healing I had ever heard. He said that a, if you look at a dandelion, if you just mowed it off, what happens? It comes back. Why? Because it's a root system. You've got to kill the root. And he said, if you have to take medicine to deal with the symptoms, then you can take your faith and deal with the root cause of it. I tell you, people that, that live in a lot of pain, it's, if you take some pain medicine to kill the pain, then you can spend more time focusing on the root of that thing and digging it up. Otherwise, you fight all the time against your pain. And I thought, man, that is good news. Amen. And, and, you know, I told you my story about when I had migraine headaches for years. I mean, Dorothy would drive me to the doctor and he'd give me a shot and I'd be out for a couple of days. And if you've ever had those, you feel them, you know they're coming. It's, I can't, you just know it. It hits your brain and you just know it. And so I had migraine medicine for probably... 10 years or long, 15 years. And one day I reached up to grab my, because I, I felt it coming. I knew it was coming. And I, I had to get the medicine to kind of head it off. And I, when I grabbed up that bottle, I heard this in my, it just singed in my inside, said, stand your ground. It was that firm. It said, stand your ground. I knew what the Holy Spirit was saying. So I put the medicine back up. Never had a headache since, a migraine headache. Never. Why? Because there came that moment when I heard, stand your ground. Amen. But prior to that, if I didn't take that medicine, man, I tell you what, it's like somebody knocked your head off with a migraine if you've ever, or if you have some now, God's going to deliver you. God's going to set you free. Amen. And I just want to encourage all of us, church, whatever's going on in your body now, it's temporary. It really is. And if we will really begin to do what the Holy Spirit is telling us, we'll pray every week. If we have to lay hands on somebody every week for a month, it doesn't matter. We're going to keep doing it because it's like medicine. You know, when you go to a doctor and he says, take what? Take 10 days of antibiotics. So what do people do? They go five days, they feel good, they quit taking it, they're sick again. Why? Because they didn't fulfill the script, prescription. Well, the prescription in God's word is Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So keep taking that medicine. Take that word every day. Amen. And as Christians, as brothers and sisters, we'll keep laying hands on you, letting the power of God flow into you until you're totally healed. No condemnation. Nobody's going to say, well, if you had faith, you'd be healed. Well, if you had enough faith to get them healed, it wouldn't depend on their faith, would it? Yeah. <laughs> and there are times when Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. There's other times he healed somebody, didn't say anything about their faith. In fact, the one man said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Yeah. And he healed his son. Because love is the key to everything. And love will find a way. To see each but everybody healed. <laughs> Power's going into your neck right now. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> I want you to begin to believe that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus flows through your hands.
That's why Jesus said, lay hands on the sick. There are other times when you speak. But I've seen a whole lot of speaking with a whole lot of non-results. So we're going to see the Lord change all that. Amen? Amen. Because he loves us so much. Well, that's good, isn't it? (laughs) I can feel that going into her. And this is what we'll do every Wednesday night. We'll just, we'll just lay hands on them sometimes and don't have to say a word. Just stand there and let, let the healing power soak them. Amen. Learn how to obey the Spirit. We, there may be times we do speak to it or by the gifts of the Spirit. And I want everybody in here to operate by the gifts of the Spirit as the Spirit gives each of us according to his will. I want us to be a healthy body that looks like the head who happens to be Jesus. Amen. And, and the thing I've learned with God is, is that he likes us to be honest with him. Because when we're not honest, he can't really help us. You can't, you can't just try and, uh, you know, uh, you're afraid to tell God how you really feel. He already knows anyway. Amen. And there's times, church, we have to say, Lord, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Then there's other times, man, you're so full of faith. I'd I just like for any of you to get so full of God that you come in here and everybody you touch is healed instantly. I'll be the first in line. Praise God. And I won't be jealous. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so we're going to continue, continue. As far as I'm concerned, we'll be doing this till Jesus comes. Because we're going to be the church. You agree? Father, I want to thank you that Jesus, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. What we see you do as a son of man, you still do that through us, your body, by the Holy Spirit. Same God's anointed us with the Holy Spirit and power in your name, Jesus. Oh, Father, we want to satisfy your heart by being the healthy body that Jesus purchased that, Father, we would glorify you in your heart when you could smile on us and be so pleasing to see us stand in the freedom wherewith Christ has set us free. And where the Spirit is Lord, there will be freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. And by love, we serve one another.